Diego will be left-hander Randy Jones. Once more for the Padres, it's been the shortstop, Thomas in center field, and Gamble in left field. Winfield in right. Tennis at first base, Allman at third. With Ashford playing second, Davis doing the catching, and Jones doing the pitching. The Reds with a 5-2 victory last night as Bill Bonham ran his undefeated record to 6-0 on the year, and as a result, the Reds stand one half game now behind the Giants, who played and lost to the Dodgers at Candlestick yesterday afternoon by a final count of 3-1. to one. Those two clubs will be closing things out in San Francisco today. Don Sutton doing the pitching for Los Angeles against John Montefusco, so if the Reds can keep it going, the Dodgers can come back with another win. The Reds will be flying on to Atlanta later on this afternoon in first place in the Western Division. It might have been a bit surprising to note in our starting lineup that Pete Rose plays first base this afternoon. Johnny Bench originally slated to go at that position due to the continuing absence of Danny Gleason. Danny, of course, being struck in the right forearm in the series opener here Friday night. Did not play last night, not scheduled today, and Bent was to have been the first baseman, but John suffering with a stiff back with a late scratch. And as a result, it'll be Rose going in to play third base today, and Joe, uh, quite some time ago, as a matter of fact, that Pete has been in that position some years back in Chicago. Marty, uh, I, I really can't go down the exact year. We'll try to find out, but it was in Chicago where Pete played first, and, you know, there's not... There's a, well, I guess there is quite a bit of difference playing first base over third base, but still, uh, Pete has been there before, and He's played every infield position, every outfield position, and this afternoon he's going to pitch for a little bit. He's going to pitch for long, but for a little while. <laughs> Throw out the first pitch. Uh, and Pete really feels it's quite an honor to, the first, to be the first active player to throw out the first pitch of a ball game. Joe, they are giving the starting lineups right now. They just announced that Ray Knight is going to be playing first base and Pete Rose at third base. And there's some obvious discrepancy because I was contacted by Bernie Stowe in the Red dugout. He said Rose would be at first and Knight would be at third. But Doug Biermanach, traveling secretary, says it's the other way around. And the lineups that they're giving them here at the stadium has Rose at third and Knight at first. So we'll just have to wait and see. Be that as it may, uh, the Reds have gotten awfully good pitching here in this series to date. A strong effort by Tom Seaver Friday night. Bill Bottom continued his super pitching last night. And, uh, well, we've talked about him before. Freddie Norman, when you consider the starters who have been there from day one without missing a start, has been the most consistent pitcher in the Reds' starting rotation. Marky Anderson likes the way his pitching is shaped up, but as he pointed out in the pregame show today, Joe, the thing that's so encouraging is the pitching. The fact the club is winning, and still the offense is not where it eventually will be. Well, I think Marty uh, Pete was talking about that. He brought up a pretty good point also uh, today in talking about the ball club playing good baseball right now. For the reason for that, of course, the, the two bunch that Geronimo put on uh, uh, Friday night to... Uh, Get us uh, a couple of runs, one to drive in on a uh, well, run in on a squeeze play, and then of course the other one a sacrifice bunt to allow Concepcion to score, and then Ken Griffey a sacrifice bunt, uh, moving Pete to third base, Morgan scored him. So things like that are uh, going good for the ball club, and it's the way the game should be played. And when you're having problems with your offense, and you can do uh, the things that are necessary to win ball games like this, why then uh, you have to feel awful good about. It because you know that the offense is, is there. It's just a matter of time as to when it's going to really cut loose. But uh, to win this type of ball game, three to one. Of course, uh, last night we scored a couple of runs in the ninth inning, but uh, when that one five to two. So uh, to win that type of ball game, uh, it, it's a big thing for our pitching, but also a certainly a big thing for the ball club to to win the games. But more moreover than that is the pitching. The confidence it gives our pitchers, and uh, uh, to this point, uh, it's been very good our pitching. And after last night's ball game, our team ERA drops down to 3.82, which is still on the way down, and exactly what Sparky wants. If there's one thing to look at the pitching that we could pull for, and that was be either to get Paul Mosco or Tommy Hume uh, on the right track, and if we could do that then we would be in excellent condition pitching-wise. But until that time, uh, you know, the starting pitching of, of Bill Bonham, Freddie Norman, and Tom Seaver are going to have to carry the load as far as our starters. But uh, you just 
you know, you sit and watch Tommy Hume or Paul Mosco, and you have to feel that uh, one day, uh, very soon, one of them is going to find themselves, and Dr. Nick we're going to have quite a pitching uh, staff. Well, we've had the exchange of lineups down at home plate. The San Diego Padres are taking the field, and we'll be back with baseball from San Diego, California, in just a moment. Heading out hunting and hoping for luck. Raring to go where the country is good as new. We'd hunt for a spell and then settle down. Take it easy and gather around. Pass a red fox chew and tobacco and have a chew. Later on, when we've all done in, we build a fire, let the story spin, open up another pouch and add another chew. Red Fox is mild and like I say, a taste that fresh tastes good all day like a Tennessee hound. Red Fox won't let you down. Why don't you try Red Fox? Look for it in the white pouch with the picture of old Red taking it easy. Red Fox chewing tobacco. Now it's better than ever. One day real soon between me and you, I'm heading back to the fields with my Red Fox chew because Mr. Taking It Easy never tasted so good. Incorporated and is intended solely for the private non commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Cincinnati Reds Incorporated is prohibited. The announcers on this broadcast are employed by the Cincinnati Reds Incorporated. Well, in something that would certainly appear to be unprecedented, we talked to a number of people over the weekend if they could ever remember an active player throwing out the first ball during regular season game conditions, and nobody seems to recall when, if ever, it has happened before, but it has happened now, just now, here at San Diego. Pete Rose went to the mound, threw the first ball to catcher Bob Davis, and now the Randy Jones, the San Diego left-hander, has it. He loosens up before Pete steps in to lead the ball game off. The Reds, 11 over the 500 mark, 28 and 17. They have won 15 of 24 games here in the month of... May, and, well, they'd like to make it three straight over the San Diego Ball Club as they head east to take on the Atlanta Braves tomorrow night in the first of that three-game series down in Atlanta Stadium. I think we just got an announcement to the effect that Rose is playing first base today with Ray Knight at third. Plate umpire Dutch Rennert has just said something to Pete in pulling out the Reds' lineup card. So we had it one way, we had it another way, and we finally apparently have it the correct way after getting two different versions. It'll be Rose, Griffey, and Morgan here in the top of the first inning. Pete batting 305 with three homers and 17 runs batted in, seeking to extend his hitting streak to eight straight games, or make it nine in a row. He made it eight straight last night with a ninth inning double, his 17th two-base hit of the season to knock in a run. Quick working Randy Jones. Three wins and three losses, a 259 earned run average. Comes to the plate, Rose takes it below the knees for a ball, and this game is underway. Jones has made 10 starts with a complete game. The 1-0 pitch is swung on and hit foul down the right field line. That'll be out of play. Randy's last outing was Tuesday night here against the Dodgers. Pitched seven innings, giving up two runs and six hits. He walked one and struck out one and did not figure in the decision. Two balls and one strike. That was the game that the Padres came up with two eighth-inning runs in to defeat the Dodgers 3-2. Raleigh Fingers picked up the win. Rose shoots it to right field. That ball curving, and it's going to be foul into the Cincinnati bullpen. Way down the right field line, but slicing foul, and Pete will come back to await the 2-2 pitch. These two clubs have met six times this season. The Reds have beaten them five, got them three out of four in Cincinnati, and have made it two out of two here in San Diego. Jones looks to Davis, and the break-even pitch. Pete swings and bounces it foul off third. 
Defensively for San Diego, they've got Gene Tennis at first base. At second, Tucker Ashford. At third, Billy Allman. At shortstop, Ozzie Smith. In left field, it's Oscar Gamble and center Daryl Thomas and right Dave Winfield. Rose again fouls it off. Bob Davis doing the catching. Randy Jones on the mound. Pete hanging in as he fouls off the strike pitches. And the count stays at two balls and two strikes. Low inside, ball three. Jones with a payoff to Pete Rose. Bounce to the left side, fielded by the third baseman Allman. Long throwing to tennis, one out. If you're driving in the downtown Cincinnati area this afternoon, we'll remind you that the Red Stadium ticket office is open today until 5.30. The ticket office will also be open all day tomorrow from 9 until 5.30. One away, here's Ken Griffey, who last night, for the third time this season, had a four-hit ball game, raising his batting average to 339. Jones pitches, Kenny takes it to letters, a fastball for a strike. Dutch Renard, our plate umpire today, at first base, Ed Montague, at second, Lee Wire, at third, Harry Windelstadt. One ball and one strike to the left-handed batting Griffey. hits gives Kenny a total of 62. He is four away from Major League leader Jimmy Rice of Boston and one short of Minnesota's Rod Carew and there's a base hit into right center field. Thomas comes over to cut it off. Griffey's going to try to get two out of it. They've got a play. He's out. Daryl Thomas making a nice throw as he cut the ball off to the gap in right center and threw a strike to Ozzie Smith and Griffey was easily out by five steps at second base. Play by Daryl Thomas. I didn't think he had a chance, but he made a perfect throw to Ozzie Smith and a tough throw because he had to make the pivot to throw back to second base. But an excellent play by their center fielder, Daryl Thomas. Well, that's the position that most observers feel that Thomas is better adapted to, although he's played second base this season as much as he's played center. Daryl would prefer to play in center field, and I think he just showed you why. Two away. Griffey gets a single out of it. Joe Morgan takes the pitch low from Jones. Morgan batting 245. Seven homers and 34 runs batted in. Strike two and one and one. This is the third straight left-hander we've seen in this series. Here's a ground ball slap to second. Bobble by Ashford picks it up, recovers, and throws Morgan out. In the inning, no runs, one hit. No errors and none left, and after a half inning of baseball, it's a red nothing, and the Padres are coming to bat. You know, different folks have different ways to spend their time, enjoy their days. Me, I like to fish. I really do. Well, there's something good about a lazy creek. It helps me relax from a long, hard week like my red box chewing tobacco, the relaxing chew. It's soft and moist and mild for sure. The flavor's fresh. The taste is pure. Red Fox is best. I like it. Yes, I do. So I keep me an extra pouch of Red Fox by my side in my tackle box. When it comes to tobacco, those Red Fox folks come through. Why don't you try Red Fox? Look for it in the white pouch with a picture of old Red taking it easy. Red Fox chewing tobacco. Now it's better than ever. So if you like to relax, and I'll bet you do, settle down with a Red Fox chew, because Mr. Taking It Easy never tasted so good. Red Fox. Well, Cincinnati Reds fans will get another first-hand look at the race in the National League West when the Dodgers and the Giants come to Riverfront in late June and early July. All seats have been sold for the L.A. doubleheader on June 30th, but plenty of tickets are still available for the 7 o'clock game with the Dodgers on Saturday, July 1st and the 2:15 game on Sunday, July 2nd. The Giants are at Riverfront the following weekend for four games in three days. A Twinite doubleheader on Friday, July 7th, a 7 o'clock game on Saturday, July 8th, and then a 2:15 game on Sunday, July 9th. Make your plans now to be on hand for these big games. Be sure to purchase your tickets in advance. Freddie Norman with a record of five wins and a loss. He can join Bill Bonham in the sixth win category today if he can knock off the Padres. 
Ten starts, no complete games, and a fine 278 earned run average for this left-hander who at one time pitched for the San Diego Padres. In fact, it was five years ago when Norman came over to the Reds in June of 1973 and has done a heck of a job having been in that Cincinnati starting rotation for most of that time. Ozzie Smith will be the Padres' leadoff batter. Switch hitting shortstop, batting 255 and hitting 162 as a right-hand batter. He'll be followed by center fielder Thomas and left fielder Gamble. Rose is at first. Knight is at third. Here's the pitch as they both play shallow and a line drive to left center field. That is going to go to the wall. Now cut off by Geronimo, but he'll not keep Smith from going to second with a first pitch double. These are just able to cut it off. Had he not been able to do so, Ozzie Smith would have been able to go to third base standing up. Number 30. Oh, for the youngster who... Dazzled on the field this season. He comes up with his fourth two-base hit. That'll bring up Daryl Thomas. Rose first, Morgan second, Concepcion short, Knight third. Foster left, Geronimo center, Griffey right, and Werner catching. Norman looking out towards second base. He now collects his thoughts, toes a pitching rubber, and checks in with Don Werner. Thomas also a switch hitter, batting 258 on the year. Smith takes his lead at second. Freddie with a pause and a pitch. And Thomas bunts third base side. That's going to be a good bunt. Picked up by Knight. He throws to Rose for the out on Thomas. And going to third base is Ozzie Smith. Now Daryl Thomas coming back. He's upset about something. What, I don't know, unless he felt like he might have been interfered with as he laid down the bunt and started toward first base. He now goes to Roger Craig, who comes out of the San Diego dugout to appeal it. And they together will go to plate umpire Dutch Renner to talk about whatever it is that Daryl Thomas is upset about. It'll be a sacrifice, 5-3, to three, Knight to Pete Rose, and Ozzie Smith moves to third base for left fielder Oscar Gamble. game last night after being called out on strikes in the fourth inning on a pitch that he thought was in his own words four inches inside got into a heated argument with plate umpire Harry Windelstadt and was thrown out the Reds infield will be playing up a bit with Smith at third and one away here's a pitch to Gamble he takes it high and inside a ball hitting only 229 with three homers and 16 RBIs people are taking bets that it's only a matter of days before Gamble will be going to the American League. There's a strike call to him, and he's been out of shape over that call by Dutch Renner. We talked to some of the folks at uh, the San Diego club. They say that Oscar Gamble really fired out on the umpires during spring training. And something that the men in blue simply did not take a very much of a liking to. There's a breaking pitch outside. Two balls and one strike. Only two for 13 against Reds pitching and has knocked in a run. One out, runner at third. Pitch is swung on ground ball, left side. That's going to get a run in. Here's Concepcion's throw, not in time. Base hit for Gamble. And with Ozzie Smith scoring, the Padres take a one nothing lead. shoots it the other way. David had to go into the hole to field it. His throw was high and late, and Gamble has an infield hit, and his 17th run batted in. That brings up Dave Winfield. Dave batting 272 with six homers and 23 RBIs. He was a big out last night in batting off of left-hander Dave Tomlin. In the eighth inning, Tomlin ultimately popped him up to Donnie Werner. Gamble leads at first, and the pitch to Winfield. Bluffs the bunt, takes it low. Got the military well in attendance today. Out on the second deck in left field, we've got the Navy in one section and the Marine Corps in another one. Norman starts to the stretch, backs off the pitching rubber. Now 
Now Winfield is ready, and Norman Seitz is signed from Warner. The 1-0 pitch, way inside, two balls and no strikes. beaten the Padres seven times in 11 decisions since coming over from this club in 1973. Swing and a bouncing ball shortstop. Concepcion Morgan. Morgan throws and it's a double play. Pete had to reach to the home plate side of the bag but kept that foot on the base to get Winfield for the double play. One run on two base hits. No errors and none left and at the end of one complete the Padres lead Cincinnati one to nothing. Buying a house is no small decision to make, but if you've decided the time is right for you, then discover Westboro in the Meadows, a Foxboro community of fine homes in Delaware. At Westboro in the Meadows, you can enjoy the finest of living at a cost that'll surprise you. For example, explore the Space Maker, a one-and-a-half-story home that features a huge family-style kitchen and attached garage starting at just 375. If you choose the optional bonus space plan, you'll have over 1,500 square feet of living area, including four bedrooms, two baths, for less than 42,000. All homes at Westboro in the Meadows feature Thermo Shield, an energy-saving package by National. And be sure to ask about how the homeowner's 10-year warranty plan. For more information, call Metzger Brothers Realty at 548-4900. Or take William Street West off Route 23 in Delaware, turn south on Finnick by the golf course. An equal housing opportunity development open Monday through Thursday, 4 to 7 p.m., Saturday and Sunday, 1 to 6 p.m. A lot of Major League Baseball going on this afternoon. In fact, in the American League, a total of four doubleheaders on the card. One final is in. The Yankees have beaten Toronto in the first of two, five to three. Ron Guidry winning his seventh consecutive game without a defeat. Jesse Jefferson took the loss, and Mickey Rivers got a home run with none on in the seventh for the Yankees, his second of the season. It'll be Foster, Concepcion, and Knight here in the second as the Reds find themselves down one nothing. George batting 319 with seven homers, 32 runs batted in. Randy Jones, who likes to work very quickly, being forced to wait now. Foster was about three quarters of the way into the batter's box, then stepped out. He is ready, and Jones immediately comes to him. Swung on, ground ball down the line, back at it. Nice play by Allman from foul ground. He throws, and he got it. Billy Allman made a super play. His momentum carried him to foul territory, and he came up firing a bullet to Gene Tennis, and as things turned out, he got Foster by maybe two or three steps. One good play, one down, and Davey Concepcion stepping in and will be carrying a 10-game hitting streak into this one. National League scores at the end of eight, Pittsburgh leading Montreal 8-2 to two after taking that 15-1 to one drubbing last night's ball game, the Pirates have come back and leading 8-2 to two in the ninth inning today. Here's a pitch to David. That's at the knees on the outside corner for a strike. Philadelphia trailing Atlanta 4-1 after six. Jeff Burrows is homered. Here's a pitch. That's in there. Strike two call. The Cubs lead the Cardinals 2 to nothing after an inning and a half. The Mets and the Astros are tied at 1-1 through four. Cedeno, a Houston home run. And L.A. and San Francisco, no score in yet on that game, with Sutton going against Montefusco. Grounded slowly towards shortstop. Ozzie Smith with a running throw, two down. <laughs> two away in the Cincinnati second for third baseman Ray Knight. Third baseman. batting 250 with the homer and three RBIs this season. Jones trying to retire the side in order delivers a strike. Well, I'll tell you the one thing you cannot do is go up there with an idea of taking pitches because Jones very rarely walks anybody. One ball and one strike. He has walked 16 in 66 innings coming into this start while having struck out but 18 batters. Swing and a line drive into right field, slicing away from Winfield. He makes the running catch. Reds 
are out in order. Two fine plays in this inning. The play that Allman made on Foster and that running catch by Winfield to Rob Knight. In the middle of inning number two, the Padres won and the Reds nothing. You found a place with plenty of space where nothing can go wrong. You're in the mood for fun and good food and your broad strolls dear along. I thought we were going to have a party. We are, Linda. We are. But, Charlie, how can we have a party in the middle of nowhere? I don't see anyone around. Who's going to eat all this great food I prepared and drink all this Stroh's beer? Just watch, Linda. You take one ice-cold can of Stroh's beer and... talk about all the Reds gift items and souvenirs available at the Reds 580 gift shop and we want to pass along word to fans who can't get to 580 that all of these Reds souvenirs are also available by mail. Just call or write the Cincinnati Reds office at Riverfront Stadium and they'll be happy to mail you a complete souvenir list. Gift items or souvenirs from 580 make great gifts for any Reds fan. Stop by the gift shop soon or call or write for 580 mail order information. By the way, don't forget that the big Memorial Weekend sale continues tomorrow at 580. The shop will be open from 10 until 4, so stop by and check out all the super bargains. This man, Gene Tennis, hit a ninth-inning home run last night to account for the second and final San Diego marker of the night. Tennis batting 219. He's hit four and has driven in 12 runs. Norman delivers, and the pitch is a half-swing foul skittering between the legs of Ray uh, Don Werner, who now runs it down. Other scores of games still in progress at the end of seven in Baltimore, first game. Indians three and the Orioles three. Swung on and full foul at third. After eight complete in Chicago, the White Sox with Ken Kravick shutting out Oakland by a score of three to nothing. George Orta has hit a home run as six of the year for the White Sox. The Tigers and the Red Sox are in the ninth inning, and Boston is tied at three runs apiece. Ron LaFleur, his fifth home run of the season for Detroit. Pitch is low for a ball, one and two. Kansas City and Minnesota finally getting back to playing after two days of rainouts, and at the end of six, it's Kansas City seven and Minnesota two. Tennis now steps away from the plate. On deck, Billy Allman. He'll be followed by Tucker Ashford. Tennis back in the batter's box as he levels the bat. Norman rocks to the windup, his pitch. That's fouled away. Now the Reds are seeking their fourth consecutive win, their sixth game in the last seven tries, their ninth victory in the last 11 games, and their 13th win in the last 18. The club has been playing very well lately and has been getting some fine pitching. Swung on, fouled again. Tennis bouncing this one to the Cincinnati dugout. Well, I'll tell you, we have had some kind of weather for our three-day stay in this city. Understand it is summertime personified back in the greater Cincinnati area. One ball and two strikes and holding on tennis. Norman sends in the pitch and tennis takes it just high and it's even at two and two. He struck him out, and that's the first in the game for Fred Norman. We'll pause now for station identification on the Cincinnati Reds Baseball Network. This is FM 100, WRMZ, Columbus, Ohio, the home of Cincinnati Reds. Marty Brenneman and Joe Nuxall, right here in Mid-Ohio.
strike out of tennis. Here's Bill Allman, the third baseman. He takes a strike. Allman with a batting average of 302 with no homers and 10 RBIs has not fared too well against Cincinnati pitching in the five games or six games to date, having had but four hits and 20 times up. Count evens to him at one ball and one strike. Outfield shading Allman just a bit toward left. Pass ball away and high, two and one. In the pregame salute to Pete Rose today, they presented Rose with a bouquet, if you will, of long stem roses and a portrait of Pete's bat swing. There's a swing and a foul back, two and two, but I guess the highlight was the ever-present KGB chicken that we talked so much about. He did a parody on Pete. From the time he steps into the batter's box, he drops down a bunt. He went around the diamond, first, second, and third, and then came home at a couple of head-first slides involved, and it was quite something else. Here's a fly ball hit to straightaway center field. Geronimo draws a beat on it. He makes a catch, two out. I don't know that I've ever seen anything to make you laugh any harder than the chicken. The young man's quite an actor and an athlete, I'd say. And a cut, but looks pretty good swinging the bat for a chicken. I don't know what he makes, but I'll tell you, he earns every penny of it. Penny of it. Two away now in the inning, and Norman will be facing second baseman Tucker Ashford, hitting 227. That's a strike, knee high on the outside corner. Freddie touched for a run in the first inning on a leadoff double by Ozzie Smith, a sacrifice bunt by Thomas, and an infield base hit by Oscar Gamble. One ball and one strike to the right-handed batting Ashford. in the dirt, bounces away from Don Warner. Two balls and one strike. On deck for the Padres, catcher Bob Davis. Norman has struck out tennis. He is flying Allman out to center field. That's low, and the count goes to three and one. Norman sends in the 3-1 pitch, swung on, hit hard, diving stop by Knight. He gets up, throws out. We have seen both third basemen turn in dandy plays here early in the game. Ray Knight robbing Tucker Ashford of a base hit, and that wraps up the second for San Diego. Three up and three down. We'll go to the third. Trailing the Padres, 1-0. When your car needs an oil change, chances are what you say is change the oil which is all you need to say unless you want to make a change for the better. Namely, new Ultra D motor oil from Marathon. Marathon's new Ultra D motor oil is a special blend of natural and synthetic ingredients that's really different from conventional blends. A special blend that means better gas mileage for you. More miles per tank full. New Ultra D motor oil was tested by independent laboratories driving, and the results were the same. Improved gas mileage, more miles per tank full. So go ahead, improve your mileage. Get your car's engine together with Marathon's new Ultra D motor oil. Change A change for the better from the people who do it better. Marathon Oil Company. be our leadoff batter here in the third inning. The Reds trailing San Diego by a scant one-run margin. And here to call the play-by-play -play for you, Joe Nuxall. All right, Marty. Warner, Geronimo, and Norman here in the third against Randy Jones. Warner hitting 167. He was driven in five runs. Jones winds and delivers, and Warner looks at it low and outside the ball. Randy wastes no time at all. Here comes the 1-0 pitch. 
Carter swings on it and bounces it deep to short. Smith has a long throw high and a good save by Gene Tennis. That'll be a base hit. Ozzie Smith going deep in the hole and throwing quickly and high to Gene Tennis. So Don Warner with a base hit and each team with two hits in the game. Field down at first base, doing a tag on Warner with actually Don trying to running out of the baseline to avoid a collision with Gene Tennis. All right, here's Geronimo. Cesar hitting 271, two home runs, 16 RBIs, nine doubles, a triple. Jones delivers and it's swung on and foul. Padres leading a one to nothing, getting a run in the first inning on a double by Smith, a sacrifice by Thomas, and an infield single by Oscar Gamble. Jones sets his pitch. That's just outside. Count evens one and one. Third baseman Bill Allman on the grass. To the belt, he delivers. Swung on and that's missed it. Fastball up and into Chief, and down goes the ball, two strikes. Ninth inning now at Pittsburgh, the Pirates leading Montreal five to two. Jones delivers, rolling outside, a breaking ball. Down evens, two balls, two strikes. Things are underway in San Francisco, the Dodgers and the Giants. Warner steps back. The Reds is trying to make a three straight over San Diego. Pitch to Geronimo, swung on and bounced. By a good play by Ashford. He's down from the knees, throws to tennis, and he gets it. Boy, we are seeing some fine defensive baseball here early in the ballgame. Tucker Ashford had a dive off to his left. Love the ball and from his knees threw Geronimo out. Moving on to second base, Don Warner. So Ashford, Allman, for, and Thomas for the Padres. Fine plays. And, of course, Ray Knight, a good play for the Reds. One away, Warner now at second base, and Freddie Norman the better. Red has had six hits and 26 times up. He's driven in two runs. Jones delivers to him inside a ball. Ready at 231 batting average. Pitch to him, swung on hard ground ball, knocked down by Tennessee. Picks it up, goes to the bag, gets Norman, and on to third base goes Don Warner. Ready hitting that ball hard, but right at Gene Tennant. Two away, and Pete Rose steps in. Pete in the first inning, leading off the game. Bounce to home in the third base. Rose hitting 305, three home runs, 17 RBIs, 17 doubles, and two triples. Jones delivers, and Rose takes it high and inside the ball. I am called now as Dutch Renners. The plate umpire inspects the baseball, and will give Jones another. takes outside 2-0. Oh. Warner at third base with two out. Padres leading one to nothing. Jones back to the plate. Pete swings on it, sends it to right field deep. Drifting back Winfield on the warning track, reaches above his head and makes the play. He hit the ball well to the opposite field, but 6-7 Dave Winfield was able to gather it in. For the Reds in the third, no runs, they get a hit. There were no errors, and one runner left on base, and at the middle of the third, San Diego won, Cincinnati nothing.
Why all the scratching there, Dotson? Well, that's the latest mystery, Hemlock Stone. It's really getting under my skin. Ah, yes. You mean the Oaks. The case of the mysterious apartment. That's there. close, Hemlock. It's the case of the Oaks, all right. Poison. Ah, uh ha. -huh. I got it yesterday when you and I were running through the woods looking for apartments. You know, the Oaks? What now, Stone? Well, first, we got to get into these boots here, Dotson. I hear the Oaks are located on rolling ground adjacent to a creek. So, you see, we'll follow this creek until we get to these rough salt cedar and brick apartments there. And we'll find an Olympic-sized pool, a sauna, an exercise room. Each apartment has a patio or balcony. You get one, two, or three-bedroom garden apartments from $170. A two-bedroom townhouse with a basement for $230. A friendly man will greet us and tell us a six-month lease is available. And we can have a pet if we wish. So, quit you scratching, Dotson, and let's get cracking. We must find these oaks. We'll take I-270 to the Georgesville Road exit, go north to Hall Road, and straight back to the oaks. Or we can call 878-4610. That is, if we have a phone handy, you see. For San Diego on the bottom half of the third inning, it'll be Bob Davis, Randy Jones, and Ozzy Smith. Davis hitting 229. He has driven in a couple of runs and has a double. Buddy Norman has given the Padres two hits who struck out one. The two hits coming in the first inning when they scored their run. A double by Smith, a sacrifice by Thomas, and an infield single by Oscar Gamble to score Smith from third base. The catcher, number seven, Bob Davis. So Freddie looking for his sixth win of the year. He's five and one. This is the first start against the Padres this year. Five time against San Diego. Fred has won seven and lost four. And ready to work to Davis. His first pitch on the way, and that's under the knees of ball. The Reds looking for their 29th win of the year. 1 0 pitch. Davis swings and hits it off the end of the bat slowly to Concepcion. Another fine defensive play. Barehanding on the run and throwing Davis out. So, four excellent defensive plays already in this ball game. Junior Kennedy. Concepcion, Knight for the Reds, Ashford, Allman, and Thomas for the Padres. All right, here's Randy Jones. Jones, three hits and 21 times the plate this year. He swings from the first pitch and slowly to Concepcion up in the running throw and scooped out by Rose and... Boy, oh boy, what baseball we're seeing here early in the ball game. Beat his first game at first base in quite a while right now, shaking his right hand, and apparently that throw got some meat. But a good play by Pete and a good play by Concepcion, two out. Number one. And the batter is Ozzie yeah. Smith. and delivers Smith. Takes it outside the ball. Pretty works. Smith takes a strike at the knees. One and one. The one one to Smith. That's high, a slider. Two and one. The base is empty. Padres leading it one to nothing. Norman back to the plate. Smith swings on it and a foul tip into the middle of Don Werner. Down even at 2 2. Freddie delivers. High and outside with a screw ball and Funny, he appears to be having some problems with his screwball. He's thrown a couple of good ones. He struck tennis out on a screwball in the second inning. Payoff on the way, and Smith swings and sends it to center field. Geronimo drifting back a couple of steps, and he has it, and that's the inning. Padres out in order, and Freddie has now retired eight straight batters. Nothing across, middle of the year at the end of three here at San Diego. Padres one, Reds nothing. And I'll let you go. The time is right, that feeling's coming through. We 
Oscar sliding right on top of the bag. And trainer now out, and he'll, apparently it's his right leg. Apparently, Gamma will be all right. Gamble at second and one out. Armin sets and delivers and one field takes a strike. Ready to the belt, looks back at Gamble and the pitch that's low on outside. One and one to Winfield. Freedom. 
Schneider not in ball game. Junior Kennedy leaping for the ball, but did not quite get to it. Tennis now at second base. Almond at first with a base hit in the RBI. And the batter will be Tucker Ashford. Padres leading three to nothing now. Fine play by Ray Knight in the second inning. Norman delivers and Ashford swings and misses. Craig again 
Ben wants to discuss it with Dutch Renner. Leading off the third. Owns one of the three red hits. 
Takes it low for a ball. Swung on and bounced foul. That ball rolling into fair ground along the third base line, but... It's a foul ball, and it's a one ball, one strike count. Jim Rice has done it again for the Boston Red Sox. He hit his 18th home run in the 10th inning today to defeat the Detroit Tigers. Four to three. Night swing, or a Werner swings it to one, bounce it to second, Ashford to first, two out. That'll bring up Geronimo, who had a base hit taken away in the third inning on the diving stop by Tucker Ashford. How about a train ride to the ball game? Selected Amtrak runs offer a special bargain price and are scheduled around Reds home games. Check your nearest Amtrak station for more details. We're two outs into the top of the fifth inning and down to the Padres and Randy Jones three to nothing. Geronimo swings and fouls it away. batting 269 swings and pops it in the air back in shallow left center going back Smith coming in Gamble and Oscar Gamble puts the grab on it that's all for the Reds as Randy Jones sets them down in order for the second time in the game and after four and a half the Padres lead the Reds three to nothing the Red Rooters are sponsoring their first big weekend in town with our hard-hitting Reds Friday June 30th Saturday July 1st and Sunday July 2nd the Los Angeles Dodgers will be in town. This regular season roundup includes hotel accommodations at a leading Cincinnati hotel for two nights, three delicious meals, and reserved seats at spacious Riverfront Stadium for four big games. There will be two Stroh's Hospitality Parties where you can get plenty of that good cold Stroh's beer, along with music and dancing. Here's your chance to get in on the action and root for the Reds. It's just $79.95 per person. For complete details on this sports weekend, contact the Party Rap Agency at 513-381-7277. 513-381-7277. Bring your family, bring your friends, and we'll look for you there. That's another Red Rooters fun weekend. And we at Stroh's hope you enjoy it. We'll be back at Riverfront Stadium Friday night as the Pirates visit for three games, an 8.05 game on Friday, a 7 o'clock game Saturday evening, and then a 2.15 start next Sunday to wind up the brief homestand. Plan to be on hand and purchase your tickets in advance at the Red Ticket Agency nearest you. In Salina, at the Style Shop, in Newark at Sears. In Muncie, at Red Sporting Goods. In Richmond, Indiana, at Phillips Drugs. And in Ashland, Kentucky, at Zwick Music. Randy Jones to lead off the home fifth inning. Grounded out to shortstop, his first trip up in the third. Swings hit the hard smash, just foul at third base. So the Padres trying to salvage one of the three. They will be in Dodger Stadium tomorrow night. That'll be the first of a three-game series. Jones takes it low as Norman evens the count on him at one ball and one strike. on, fouled away, and the count goes to a ball and two strikes on Freddie Norman's opposite number, Randy Jones. Tomorrow night, we, of course, will be in Atlanta Stadium. First trip in for the Reds to face the Braves on their home turf this season. Jones is called out on strikes. Norman has his second strikeout. Tomorrow night, 7.35 game time. We'll be on the air with the pregame shows at 7.05 as Mickey Mailer, the left-hander, throws for Atlanta against right-hander Paul Mosco. Tuesday night, it'll be Tommy Hume against Phil Necro. And Wednesday night, Tom Seaver will oppose Dick Ruthven. Ozzie Smith is double. He scored a run. He's also fly to center. Ball to him. on, hit hard to second. Kennedy gets the benefit of the convenient big bounce and throws him out. So two down very quickly, and that'll bring up Daryl Thomas, who's 0 for 1 with a sacrifice. This reminder, again, all seats have been sold for the Red Dodgers doubleheader on Friday, June 30th, but plenty of tickets are still available for the games with L.A. on July 1st and 2nd, as well as for the big Giants series, July 7th, 8th, and 9th. Be on hand. 
two out for the Padres. Nothing going on. They lead 3-0. Thomas batting 256 as he stands in against the left-hander and takes the strike at the knees. Plus the bunt, takes the strike. Thomas shortening up on the bat, and he thought that pitch was well outside. In fact, he leaned out over across the plate to indicate in the general vicinity where he thought the pitch was. Nevertheless, the batter down 0-2. Norman kicks and fires. Thomas swings, just loses his bat, but grounds to third. Knight up, throwing, out, and that's the inning. The Padres go up and down, no runs, no hits, and nobody left on. And we've completed five in this series wrap-up. And it remains San Diego 3 and Cincinnati nothing. Sixth inning action, and Sparky Anderson is going to take down Freddie Norman in favor of pinch hitter Dave Collins. As Norman works the first five in this game, allows three runs, two of them earned on four base hits. Struck out two, walked two, and delivered a wild pitch. Dave Collins batting 222. Pinch hitting, he's gone two for 17 this season. No homers, four RBIs. So we'll have Pedro Bourbon to come on and work the Padres batters in the bottom of the sixth inning. Randy Jones has given us three hits. Single by Griffey in the first, an infield hit to shortstop by Werner in the third, and an infield hit to third by Foster in the fourth. Pitch to Collins, the takes it high a ball after first giving indication he wanted to lay a bunt down. Swing and a miss. One ball, one strike. playing about three steps in on the grass at third base for Collins. Here's a bouncing ball by the third baseman, by the diving shortstop. Collins leads off with a pinch hit to left. So Dave Collins beating the ball on the ground had the high hop go by the leaping Billy Allman and the ball shot past the diving shortstop Ozzie Smith. Rose has bounced to third and fly to Winfield. He caught the ball on the warning track back in the third. Jones checks Collins, delivers to Pete. Ball is low. Rose batting 302. Swing and a high pop. Pass first. Foul ground. Tennis running over to the warning track, and the ball falls well back into the seat. One ball and one strike. Giants and Dodgers no score with San Francisco batting in the bottom of the second. It's going to be interesting to see what kind of crowd they have today because they were speculating yesterday on a crowd in the neighborhood of between 55 and 57,000. Here's a bouncer over the mound. Glove by the second baseman. Ashford forces the runner at second, but the throw to first not in time to double up Pete. Nice play by Tucker Ashford who backhanded the bouncing ball back of second base. Stepped on it quickly to force Collins. Griffey. With that first inning single, he had five hits and five trips up, counting the four for four last night, but then he bounced back to Jones in the fourth inning. So Rose, a new runner at first base now with one out. Down by three runs we are in the sixth inning. Jones has been in command all the way up to this point. the pitch, and Griffey swings and hits one hard to center. There's Thomas, and he'll make the basket catch. Two out. That'll bring up Junior Kennedy. He came on to play in the bottom of the third after Joe Morgan was lifted because of a re-aggravated growing pull, and the report that we got that Morgan will be out for a few days. So the Reds' hospital list continues to be somewhat high with Morgan going out today. Kenny Henderson having played very little since coming over from the New York Mets. There's a strike call with that bothersome toe injury that had him on the 21-day disabled list while with New York. Swing and a foul, strike two, no balls, two strikes. And, of course, without the services of Johnny Bench today, who 
Has a step back. Pitch is low for a ball, and it's one ball and two strikes on Kennedy. Throws a runner at first. Junior swings, grounds one slowly toward shortstop. Smith throws back to second, and they get the force out that ends the inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left. Going to the bottom of the sixth inning, the Padres three, the Reds nothing. Buying a house is no small decision to make. But if you decide the time is right for you, then discover Westboro in the Meadows, a Foxboro community of fine homes in Delaware. At Westboro in the Meadows, you can enjoy the finest of living at a cost that will surprise you. For example, the Fairchild is a beautiful bi-level home that provides three bedrooms starting at just $36.9. And if you choose the optional bonus space plan, you can have a total of over 1,800 square feet of living area, including a large family room and an extra bedroom. All the homes at Westboro in the Meadows feature a thermo shield, an energy-saving package by National. And be sure to ask about how the homeowner's 10-year warranty plan. For more information, call Metzger Brothers Realty at 548-4900. 548-4900. Or take Williams Street west off Route 23 in Delaware. Then turn south on Phoenix by the golf course. An equal housing opportunity development. Westboro in the Meadows is open Monday through Thursday, 4 to 7, Saturday and Sunday, 1 to 6. Even the youngsters have been talking about a trip to see the Reds in action. May we suggest Sunday, June 18th. Everybody will be treated to some great baseball by the Reds and the Cardinals, and every fan, 21 and under, will get a free souvenir poster of Ken Griffey. The colorful two-foot by three-foot poster is the eighth in the Reds series and features a dramatic action photo of the Reds' right fielder. Be on hand Sunday, June 18th, when the Reds meet the Cardinals on Ken Griffey Poster Day. Pedro Bourbon is now on the mound for Cincinnati, making his 17th appearance of the season. And his first in six days, Bourbon worked an inning against the Atlanta Braves in that 10-0 shutout. Joe Bonham went the first date, and Bourbon pitched a perfect ninth inning. He faced the Padres a couple of times last weekend at Riverfront, going an inning and getting up a hit in one game, allowing him three hits and a run in two innings in the first game of the twin bill last Sunday. He'll be facing Gamble, Winfield, and Jennis. Gamble, perfect two for two. An infield hit to drive in the game's first run in the opening inning, and then a double to left center in the fourth inning, and eventually came in to score himself. He swings and fouls off the first pitch. Again, the line on Norman, five innings, four hits. Three runs, two of which were earned. He struck out a pair, walked two, and threw a wild pitch. One strike to the left-handed batter. Dodgers have come up with a run in the third. They lead the Giants in Montefusco 1-0. Swung on and hit along the left field line. Hooking foul and despite the long run by Ray Knight, out of play. Should L.A. win that game today and the Padre lead stand up here against Cincinnati, it would be a dead tie for second in the Western Division. The Reds and the Dodgers would thus be one and a half games behind, or be a half game behind the San Francisco Giants, or a game and a half behind. Let's get that right. We start out today a half game back. One ball and two strikes. a sign, Bourbon delivers, and off the bat handle, a slowly hit ground ball to Kennedy, up throwing to Rose, one out. Here's Dave Winfield. The right fielder, Dave Winfield. Dave was on in the fourth through an error by Junior Kennedy. That allowed Gamble to score from second base. And Winfield scored himself in that two-run inning. Each club with four hits. The Padres have scored three times. The Reds have been shut out through six innings by Randy Jones. There's a strike taken by Winfield. Four ball with a record of two and one. He has saved three games and has an earned run average of 6-12. Swung on, hit into right center field. That could be a problem. Who will get it? It'll be caught by Griffey as he cuts in front of Geronimo. 
both crisscrossing. And Kenny makes a running catch to retire Winfield for out number two. The Reds Radio Network brings Reds baseball to fans in seven states, and you can hear the games in Wellston, Ohio, on WKOB, in Bloomington, Indiana, on WGTC, in Cynthiana, Kentucky, on WCYN, in Norton, Virginia, on WNVA, and in Beckley, West Virginia, on WJLS. Dennis with a three-quarter swing for a strike. Gene is struck out. He's also walked. the third. Knight plays it on the second hop. Here's his throw. High. Rose off the bank. Dennis safe. That'll be a throwing error on Ray Knight. That one is routine a ground ball as you're going to get. Ray had plenty of time to throw tennis out because he cannot run well at all, but Ray just had to get away from him. It took feet off the bank, and despite Rose is trying to get back there after making the catch, tennis got there first. That keeps the inning going for Billy Allman. He was at the plate, but now calls time with Dutch Renard and comes on back to the San Diego dugout. So the Reds have committed a couple of errors today. One earlier by Junior Kennedy, and now this two-out six-inning throwing error by Ray Knight. Allman apparently had the wrong bat with a run-scoring single in the fourth inning. He hit a soft line drive that Kennedy went back on, leaped, and just could not quite get it. This one is fouled off first. Game moving very quickly along. We have almost completed six innings in an hour and a half. Here's a high fly ball hitting the right center field. Geronimo goes back along with Griffey. Look out. It's going to be caught by Geronimo. Well, you had Geronimo looking at Griffey, and you could see that all of a sudden they realized there was a problem afoot because Cesar really turned it on as he shot by Kenny in deep right center and picked it off on the run. No runs, no hits, one arrow, one left. We'll move to the seventh inning trailing the Padres 3-0. Oh, now he's Okay, we move to the top of the seventh inning, and to start it off against the Reds, well, for the Reds, will be left fielder George Foster, and back with the action, here's Joe. All right, Marty, George, one for two. He had an infield single in the fourth inning. Well, he's had to go to work, trailing the Padres three to nothing, and I have three more swings at Randy Jones. The Reds have had four hits off Jones, but we have not been able to score a run. The four hits have been the three of the four hits have been infield hits. First pitch is swung on and hit into center field. Daryl Thomas backing off now, waiting on it, and he has it one away. One down and Dave Concepcion, the batter. Dave 0 for two. He's grounded to short and is hit into a four stop. takes a strike to the knee. Freddie Norman worked five innings about the four hits. Ball outside, one and one. Freddie allowing four hits, striking out two, walking two, and three runs, two of them earned. Jones to the plate, and that's a breaking ball inside and Concepcion checked his swing on and spins all the way around. To the plate, and that's a breaking ball inside. Concepcion checked his swing on and spins all the way around. Two balls to strike. Randy works. Swung on and fouled. Down even at two and two. 
defensive play here this afternoon, but a couple of bad ones also defensively. A couple of errors charged to the Reds, one to Kennedy, one to Knight. Swing and a ground ball. Ace for charging it second up and throwing the tennis and two away. Two out and Ray Knight steps in. Ray 0 for 2. Out on a fine play by Dave Winfield in right field in the second inning and grounded to Ashford in the fifth. First pitch tonight, high and outside of ball. Jones back to the plate and the strike of the knees is called one and one. delivers. Knight swings and a one bounce to all in the third. Bill's long throw to tennis. Tennis off the bag. Thanks, Knight, and that's the inning. So the Reds out in order here in the seventh. Nothing across. Middle of inning number seven. San Diego three. Cincinnati nothing. Man, I love to drive on the open road and listen to that old night wind blow. Chewing Red Fox, it sure does ease my mind. Riding this ribbon on through the dark. No place to stop, no place to park. Me and Red Fox chewing tobacco, making up lost time. The Red Fox folks know what they're doing when it comes to making tobacco for chewing. For relaxation, man, it's one of a kind. It's moist and soft and mild for sure. The flavor's fresh, the taste is pure. It settles you down and helps a man unwind. Why don't you try Red Fox? Look for it in the white pouch with the picture of old Red taking it easy. So when that highway starts to call, run with the fox and beat some old Red Fox. Because Mr. Taking It Easy never tasted so good. Red Fox. For the Padres, come to bat in the bottom half of the seventh. Opa's the station identification. This is the Cincinnati Reds Baseball Network. For Cincinnati Reds baseball in the capital city, listeners tune in FM 100, WRMZ, Columbus, Ohio, for every Cincinnati Reds baseball game. For San Diego in the seventh, Tucker Ashford, Bob Davis, and Randy Jones will come to the plate. Ashford 0 for 1 and a walk. Grounded to Knight in the second inning. I shouldn't say grounded to him. Ray making a fine play on the ball. And walked in the fourth when the Padres scored two runs. I should take some Morbone low and inside the ball. Morbone in his second inning of work. Norman worked five. I should looks at the strike from Pedro and not even it's one and one. Back to the plate. Swung on it hit well to center field with Geronimo there waiting on it and has it. One out. One out. That'll bring Bob Davis to the plate. Davis over for two. Bounce to the mound and is rounded into a double play. A line to pitch. And that's a check swing ground ball to Kennedy at second. Junior has it. Flipping on the rows. Two out. Two away pitcher Randy Jones steps in. Randy over two has grounded it short and has been called out on strike. Randy gets a nice hand for the crowd here at San Diego Stadium. A good weekend attendance wise here at San Diego last night 43,484. Jones swings on the first pitch and sends it deep down the right field line, but into foul territory and all in one account. Friday night 34,227. We would imagine 30,000 plus this afternoon. All in one to count to Jones. Base is empty, two out. For Bone, the 0-1. Jones swings and misses a breaking ball, 0-2. Padres, after they move up to Los Angeles, there's a 
ball inside, and it's one ball, two strikes. Andres playing the Dodgers, three, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. All right, the one-two. That's strike three called. Second time that Jones has been called out on strikes. First strike out for Rabon, and the Padres out in order here in the seventh, nothing across. And after seven innings, it remains San Diego three, Cincinnati nothing. When your car needs an oil change, chances are what you say is change the oil, which is all you need to say unless you want to make a change for the better. Namely, new Ultra D motor oil from Marathon. Marathon's new Ultra D motor oil is a special blend of natural and synthetic ingredients that's really different from conventional blends. A special blend that means improved engine protection for you under all kinds of weather and driving conditions. Special anti-wear additives to protect the critical parts of your engine, longer than conventionally blended multi-grade oils, up to 15,000 miles. Better motor oil means a better running engine every time you drive your car. Candlestick Park with left-hander Bob Nepper beat us by a score of three to nothing. Reds had but three hits in that game, and now another left-hander, having limited us to four hits today, is working on a shutout. There's a ball. Werner on an infield hit. He's grounded out to second base. Swung on, grounded to short. Ozzy Smith up cleanly with it. Throw to first, one out. be the batter, and then we'll have a pinch hitter for Pedro Borbon. Dave Tomlin is throwing in our bullpen. Around a mole for two with a ground out, and a fly ball to left field. Got Raleigh Fingers now throwing for San Diego as Geronimo swings and he misses. Count goes quickly to no balls and two strikes. Now Jones getting a new baseball or a new one from plate umpire Dutch Renner. Hey, Mickey Lowlish threw 15 minutes of batting practice yesterday, and the Padres are looking to the time in the not too distant future of having him back, swinging a foul. The count stays at two strikes on Geronimo. That was a guy who was pitching extremely good ball out of the bullpen before suffering the knee injury that required surgery. Way inside, a ball. Jones has struck out only one in the game. That was Junior Kennedy in the fourth inning. Has not walked a batter. A typical Randy Jones ball game. Here's a slow dribbler down the third base line, but it goes foul. Rick Arbach will be batting for Bourbon. He's on deck. Cesar slowly coming on back to the plate. Now the one-two pitch again, and that's low and outside, a breaking ball. Bob Shirley has joined Raleigh Fingers in the bullpen. Here's a bouncing ball wide of first, fielded by Tennis. He will throw to Jones covering at the back for out number two. So with two down, Rick Arbach will pinch in for Cincinnati's Pedro Bourbon. Rick hitting 167. Has gone three for 18 this season with a homer and three RBIs. Number 
Frick has been to the plate but three times as a pinch hitter and has had one hit. Strike is called. That's strike two call on the outside corner. Arbach really way far off the plate and Randy Jones taking advantage of that by pitching him away with good success. He does it again. Ricks checks his swing in time. And it's one ball and two strikes. That's outside, two and two. And I'll tell you, as long as Arbach stays as far away from the plate as he stands, Randy Jones will pitch him away all day. All four pitches have been away from him, and this one is low and inside for a ball. Three and two. Atlanta has beaten Philadelphia five to three. The Phillies continue to have their troubles winning. There's ball four, and that's the first walk that Jones has allowed. That'll bring up Pete Rose, who may well be faced right now with what he was faced with last night when he came up in the ninth inning without a base hit and got that double to left center field to keep his hit string intact. He could possibly be up for the final time in this game, having grounded out, fly to deep right, and hit into a force play. He swings and hits one into center field. There's Thomas, and he'll make the catch, and that ends the eighth for Cincinnati. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one left. We played seven and a half innings of baseball, and it's the Padres over the Reds, three to nothing. Well, the time is right, that feeling's coming through. We'll give love a blow, only one deal will do. Throw, oh, the real deal lover, throw, say it's like no other. Throw, throw, the real deal lover. Everyone knows. inning and Dave Tomlin becomes the third pitcher to work in this one for Cincinnati. Pedro Bourbon goes two innings, allows no hits or runs, has a strikeout, a good two-inning relief stand by Pedro. And Dave Tomlin is on now in the eighth inning as Tomlin marks his 19th relief appearance of the season. He carries a 3-1 and one record in with a 424 earned run average and has chalked up one save. Tomlin pitched last night, two-thirds of an inning, giving up a base hit. As we pointed out at that time, two of Dave's three wins this season have come at the expense of his former employers, the San Diego team. It's going to be the top of the order. Ozzie Smith, who has doubled in three trips and has scored a run, will stand in. Each club has had four base hits in the game, and that has been the rule rather than the exception in this series. There have not been a great number of hits. Here's a high chop to first. Pete has it and goes to the bank for the putout. One pitch is all that is required to retire Ozzie Smith. And the batter will be center fielder Daryl Thomas. Hey, Pete's done a pretty good job at first today. He has not had any tough chances by any means, but... He has certainly done all that is required of him. Thomas is 0 for 3 all three times. Ray Knight has fielded balls that Thomas has hit. That first one was a sacrifice. In the fourth and the fifth, he bounced out to third. Ray will play about even with a bag. As Thomas steps in, batting 254. He swings and fouls this one off. Cincinnati's ninth inning will consist of Griffey, Kennedy, and Foster.
Padres have not had a hit since the fourth inning when they scored two runs. There's a high breaking ball. One ball and one strike. And the only base runner was Tennis in the six who reached on Knight's throwing era. Here's a grounder by. Well, Knight comes up again, and his throw to first is not in time. He and Rose and Thomas collide. The ball gets away from Pete, and Daryl Thomas is down beyond first base, flat on his back. Ray Knight made another super play as Rose stretched to the first base side of the bag to take Ray's hurry throw. He and Thomas collide. Rose is fine, but Thomas is not. Now they're looking over Thomas down beyond first. Coach Phil Roof and manager Roger Craig as Darrell slowly comes up into a sitting position. That's going to be scored a base hit. I'll tell you, we can think back into some games this season where we've seen some awfully good defense. But I'll tell you, both clubs have turned in some dandies today. Thomas on his feet now. He'll remain in the ball game, just a bit shaken up as he bounced off Rose and rolled down beyond the back at first base, and he's all right. Here's Oscar Gamble. Very much a factor in this 3 to nothing Padres lead. He had an infield hit to single in a run in the first inning. With one out, launched a double a left center in the fourth and ultimately scored when Ray, when Junior Kennedy era Dave Winfield's ground ball. Tomlin delivers. Gamble offers at it in a bunt and did not get it. Strike one. one on. Reds infield look for the ground ball and now Gamble steps away from the plate. There goes a runner. Pitch is swung on and fouled off and it's a good thing for Tomlin of the Reds that Gamble fouled that pitch away because Donnie Werner would have had no chance whatsoever to throw Thomas out. He got that kind of jump on Tomlin. Roger Craig running Thomas at first base would like to be able to add another run or two before the Reds come up in the ninth. Dave looking back in for the sign. Cantor stretches, glances at Thomas, and will throw to first base. Now Don Warner will go to the mound to talk with Tomlin. Both bullpens at this point are quiet. They sight to sign again. Here's his pitch. Gamble takes it just high. A count of one ball, two strikes. Pitch. Swung on and popped in the air. Back to second base. Both Concepcion and Kennedy go back. Davey is under. He'll make the catch. Gamble becomes a second out. Here's Dave Winfield. Number 31, the right fielder, Dave Winfield. We will not be seeing the San Diego Padres again until the, well, let's see, the month of August. They'll be in Cincinnati over the weekend of the 4th, 5th, and the 6th, all single games, and we'll be out here on the 10th, 11th, 12th, and 13th, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then the Padres will be back into Cincinnati for two games in September, the 7th and 8th, and we'll be back out here for two games on September 13th and 14th. So it'll be a while before we see this club again. Winfield looks at the strike.
Thomas getting a good lead at first base against Pete Rose, and now Dave just lob throws one over there. Two down, runner at first. Here in the bottom of the eighth, the Padres leading 3-0. Winfield checking his swing. Ball low inside, a count of one and one. Attendance today, 34,029. 34,029. So they have had quite some weekend attendance-wise here at San Diego Stadium for the Reds and the Padres. Another throw to first. That one dug out of the dirt on a low throw from Tomlin to Rose. Only one time now as Thomas been running, and that was a pitch that Gamble fouled away, but Tomlin trying to keep that from happening again with continual throws that way. 1-1 to count on Dave Winfield. There goes the runner. Pitch is taken. Here's a throw down to second. Not nearly in time. Had a good pitch to steal on. It was a breaking ball. Credit Daryl Thomas with his fourth stolen base in seven attempts this season. The Padres have now swiped 40 bases, but they have been caught stealing 34 times, and that's not a good percentage at all. Two and one to count on Winfield. High and outside, ball three. Compared their figures of 40 and 34 to the Reds, 44 and 19. And even at that, I'm sure Sparky Anderson would like the percentage to be a little bit better for his ball club than it has been. Well, Thomas steals his way into scoring position. Tomlin working carefully to Winfield. And that one is ball four, and Dave gets a free pass. that Tomlin has allowed and the fourth base on balls overall for Cincinnati pitching in the game make it the third. Norman walked two. Borbone did not walk a batter in his two innings of work. So Tennis steps in with runners at first and second. Gene has gone 0 for 1, 0 for 2. He has walked. He has struck out and reached on a throwing error. Hits a high fly ball back into right center field. That's a rainmaker. Ken Griffey is there and on the warning track he makes the catch. No runs in the Padres' eighth inning on one hit. No errors in two left, and so the Reds need three or more in the top of the ninth inning because they trail the Padres three to nothing. It's the bottom of the ninth with two outs and the score two to one. Two strikes on Phillips. He steps back into the batter's box. Here's the windup, and here's the pitch. New sash, the window experts, 267-8396. The winter of 78 won't be forgotten easily, and this coming winter is forecast as cruelly cold. New sash, the original replacement window, features the tilt-in window for easy cleaning. Your new sash windows will perfectly fit because they're custom-made to stop heat and cold air in its tracks. Thermopane glass adds double insulation. Your monthly fuel bills will be up to 30% lower with new sash windows protecting and beautifying your home. BJ Industries is your new sash distributor. Outside Columbus, call Collect 267-8396. You're the winner with new sash. Well, we move on to the top of the ninth inning, and we've got a... Defensive change for the San Diego Padres and left field now is Gene Richards replacing Oscar Gamble. With his three-run lead, Roger Craig going with a defense. Richards a much better player out there than is Gamble. Ken Griffey will start things off for Cincinnati. He's single in the first inning, has grounded to the mound and has slid out hard to center field. So Randy Jones, three outs away from recording his second shutout of the season. And he delivers to the plate, and the pitch is swung on and popped in the air. And center field, and on the ball is Daryl Thomas, and he'll make the catch. One away, 
away on one pitch, and here is Junior Kennedy, the second baseman. Junior Kennedy. Kennedy came on in the bottom of the third. He's been up twice with a strikeout in the fourth inning and hit into an inning-ending force out in the sixth. Plus the bunt takes a strike from Jones. Swung on, line drive into center field. That's a base hit. Cincinnati comes up with its fifth hit off Randy Jones and the first since the fifth hit single by Dave Collins leading off the sixth inning. Here's George Foster. Had a base hit taken away on a super play by Bill Allman in the second. Had an infield hit to third in the fourth and fly to center in the seventh. So Kennedy is on with a one-out single. Foster slowly settling into the batter's box and now steps away again. Now the pitch, and Foster looks at it low for a ball. Double barrel action in the San Diego bullpen. Right-hander Raleigh Fingers and left-hander Bob Shirley. Foster swings, tried to check his swing and couldn't do it on a curveball, and the count draws even at one ball, one strike. Davey Concepcion on deck. Jones continuing to work quickly. He delivers and Foster takes it high. Two balls and a strike. George's batting average has not budged off the 319 mark that he started out the day with. 10 for 24 this season against the San Diego pitching staff and trying to base it Randy Jones in the ninth. Swung on, that's a bat handle foul into the Cincinnati dugout. Through five at Candlestick, Dodgers won, Giants nothing. Bat the rubber match, the Giants won Friday night, the Dodgers took it yesterday. Swing and another foul. count holding at two balls and two strikes. He grounds one down the third baseline. That's a fair ball. It'll go to the San Diego bullpen. Here comes Junior Kennedy rounding third. He will score. And Foster goes to second and holds with a double. And the Reds trail by two runs at three to one. That was a smash that just stayed fair. The shot by third. Went all the way to the San Diego bullpen with Kennedy scoring. Foster has come up with a run-producing double with one away, and the batter will be Davey Concepcion. So the rest still hanging in there. Now trailing by two, Concepcion represents the tying run. Here comes Roger Craig out of the San Diego dugout and slowly making his way toward the mound. And let's see if he'll make a pitching change and bring on Raleigh Fingers. Griffey flied out to start the inning, but Kennedy lined a single into center. And Foster hits a smash down the third baseline and onto the left field for a run-scoring double. Greg out there just chatting now with Jones and almost his entire infield, and he elects to go down to his bullpen and bring on the right-hander, Raleigh Fingers. So here in the ninth, the Reds have struck for one, and hopefully we'll have more to come as Jones will leave in favor of the right-hander, Raleigh Fingers. With a break in the action, we'll be back with more in just a moment. Well, any birthday party by King's Island and Cheerios is bound to be great. Oh, 
Okay, let's go. And, Dad, there's something else you should know. Beginning this weekend, Teen Time will be open every day of the week. is now on the mound trying to save this one for Randy Jones. The Reds have scored one. And Foster at second, and Davy Concepcion will be at the plate with one away. As Fingers warms up to Bob Davis, we'll pause again for station identification on the Cincinnati Reds Baseball Network. Deep rights are turned on by Cincinnati Reds Baseball. Exclusively in Mid-Ohio on Zebra 100 WRMZ Columbus. Okay, fingers ready to go to work on Concepcion. Davey is 0 for 3 and has not been able to get the ball out of the infield in his three trips to the plate. Foster at second represents the second run. We get him in. It'll be a one-run ball game. George taking his lead as he checks the whereabouts of the shortstop and the second baseman. Fingers in with a pitch, and Davey takes a strike. Fingers can make it 10 saves on the year if he can get the final two out. He is 2-6 and six by way of a record with a high 3.97 earned run average and 20 relief appearances. Swing and a miss, strike two. bet that Raleigh wants to nail this one down for more than just the save and the win going to Randy Jones and the Padres as a club. He has not fared well against the Cincinnati Reds this season. This one fouled off and the count holds at two strikes. Ray Knight, he's on deck. Finger sights aside, the backward glance at second. He delivers, and Davey loops one back of first base, going back tennis. That's a foul ball, and it'll fall untouched. Raleigh has given up only two home runs this season. The Reds have hit both of them. Foster got him in the bottom of the seventh at Riverfront Stadium a week ago Friday night to give the Reds a 4-3 victory, and then Johnny Bench left on him in the ninth inning of the game here Friday night. Count holding at two strikes. Fingers throwing nothing but bullseyes to Concepcion. This one is a swing and a miss on a high breaking ball. So two down, and Ray Knight has been called back, and Mike Lum will be the Cincinnati pinch hitter. So barring a red rally that would produce two more runs and send this game into extra innings. Davey Concepcion's hip string will stop at ten games in a row as Fingers has struck him out. Mike Lum batting 240 with a homer and three RBIs. Left-handed batter against the right-handed pitcher. Coming off the bench now, trying to keep it going. Red did not have a pinch hit home run this season. And boy, what a time for number one right now. Okay, Lum is in there. And Fingers is pitching. Low for ball one. Foster, the 1-0 pitch, swung on, popped up. That should do it. Left side, back pedaling Billy Allman. He's under, and he makes the catch. So Raleigh Fingers does the job. Here in the ninth, the Reds got a run on two hits with one stranded as San Diego snaps Cincinnati's three-game winning streak in winning this game 3-1. to one. We'll be back in just a moment. Oh, great master of the mountain. For so long, we have been searching for the... Yes, uh, my son, I know. You search for the secret of the life. The true meaning of eternity. Now, now, my name is...
name is Emlock Stones, and we're searching for the Oaks. Why, who told me there'd be days like this? But you see, the Oaks are apartments of rough saw, cedar, and bricks surrounded by rolling ground, backed by a creek. Each apartment has a private patio or balcony. The Oaks has saunas, an exercise room, and an Olympic-sized pool. Garden apartments start at $170 and a two-bedroom townhouse with a basement for $230. Master, you can slip into a six-month lease, and you can have a pet if you wish. So you see, Master of the Mountain, why we must find the Oaks. Have not those. The Oaks are on the west side. Take I-270 to Georgesville Road exit. Go north to Hall Road and straight back to the Oaks. Hours are 10 to 7 weekdays and 10 to 4 Saturday and Sunday. And you may phone 878-4610. Padres hang on to win it 3-1. to one. The Reds avert a shutout with a ninth inning run on the Kennedy single and the George Foster double, but Raleigh Fingers comes on to strike out Concepcion and pop up pinch hitter Mike Love to nail it down. Three runs on only five hits with no errors and five left for San Diego, while the Reds had a run on six hits, committed two errors, and stranded five. The winner, Randy Jones, four and three, and you can credit Raleigh Fingers with his tenth save. The defeat going to Freddie Norman, the starter. He's now dropped his last two decisions and shows a record of five wins and two losses. The Reds will be flying out in about an hour and a half for Atlanta, Georgia, where they will open up a three-game series against Bobby Cox's Braves tomorrow night. We'll be back to talk about that more when we continue in just a moment. left-hander Mickey Mailer going to the mound for the Braves against right-hander Paul Mosco, still seeking his first victory of the year since his call-up from Indianapolis. We'll be on the air with the pregame shows tomorrow night beginning at 7.05 Cincinnati time on most of these same stations. This copyrighted broadcast is presented by Authority of Cincinnati Reds Incorporated and is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Cincinnati Reds Incorporated is prohibited. And now on most of these same stations, stay tuned for Joe Nuxall with the star of the game show. And again, the final score today, the Padres 3 and the Reds 1. The Reds on radio. With Marty Brenneman and Joe Nuxall. The 1978 Cincinnati Reds have been brought to you by the Stroh Brewery Company. Strohs, from one sports lover to another. And by your local marathon full-service dealers and distributors. By the makers of Red Fox Chewing Tobacco. With Red Fox, making it easy, never tasted so good. Also by Green Futures, your partners in protection. DJ Industries, the new sash distributors for Central Ohio. Crawford Nichols, the heating and cooling experts. WRMZ Sports Department. Follow the Cincinnati Reds and tune in next time for the Reds on Radio on this, the Cincinnati Reds Baseball Network. Cincinnati Reds Baseball is yours on Zebra 100, WRMZ, Columbus, Ohio, the home of the Reds for Central Ohio.
great master. I have traveled far to seek your wisdom. Speak to me. Close the uh, door. It's cold. Yes, yeah, sir. I crave the meaning of life. How do you earn your breath, my son? Well, do you till the soil? No. Do you tend sheep? I'm in advertising, sir. Advertising. Fascinating. Yes, sir. I'm in a big hurry. I have to be in Fiji tomorrow to shoot a television commercial. Fiji? Yeah, we found a place there that looks exactly like Columbus, Ohio. Why not go to Columbus, Ohio? <clears throat> Look, I'm just here for some wisdom. All right, let me check my wisdom book. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Go with radio. What? Looks to me like a fantastic buy. I wanted important wisdom. This is important. Listen, newspaper cost per thousand is up 99% since 1967. Uh -huh. TV is up 90%. Sir. But radio cost is only up 38%. 38%. And it says radio's audience is bigger than ever. But what about happiness and stuff? Use radio. It's great impact at a price you can still afford, and you'll be very happy. That's it? Yeah. And when you go out, close the door real tight, because it's cold and you're Knows. So next time you're talking to an authority on advertising, ask about radio. It's right on the button. A message from the Radio Advertising Bureau. It's time now for Joe Nuxall and the star of the game on Red 100 WRMZ. Out here at San Diego Stadium, where the Padres uh, salvaged the final game of this three-game series, winning this afternoon by a score of three to one. Randy Jones getting the win, four and three, and Freddie Norman taking the loss. Our start of the game this afternoon led off the game for the Padres with a double to right left center field and scored the first run. And we're speaking of the fine young shortstop of the Padres, Ozzie Smith. We'll be back with Ozzie after this work. You blew the kiss to wish him luck, but the only thing he did was duck. Brush your breath, brush your breath, brush your breath with Denti. Hey, how come when you're in the park, all the dogs begin to bark? Brush your breath, brush your breath, brush your breath with Denti. The tingly, snappy taste of Denti. While you're chewing Denti, your breath is mouthwash fresh. Wow. The disco's crowded everywhere, so how come you got room to spare? Brush your breath, brush your breath, brush your breath with Denti. Maybe you shouldn't have been so bold, cause when you kissed her, she passed out cold. Brush your breath, brush your breath, brush your breath with Denti. You never have too much to say, cause when you talk, they run away. Brush your breath, brush your breath, brush your breath with Denti. The tingly, snappy taste of Denti. While you're chewing Denti, your breath is mouthwash fresh. Your hair's a dream, your dress divine, but your breath could try to fight and fight. Brush your breath, brush your breath, brush your breath with Denti. Smith, the fine young shortstop of the Padres, our star of the game. Ozzie with his fourth double of the year, leading off, as we said, and scored the first run of the ball game. And Ozzie uh, leading off the game with a double off a guy like Freddie, Freddie Norman has to make you feel quite good. Yes, it does. Um, you know, I've, uh, faced, I've had a lot of good experiences uh, my first year here. You know, uh, I've hit uh, most of the big pitches pretty well. Is there a reason for it, you think, Oz? Well, I mean, I guess those kind of type of guys, you know, get you up, and, and especially against the Cincinnati Reds, you know, really get that adrenaline flowing. I see you talk about hitting in the big leagues, and of course, uh, you haven't been in organized ball, professional ball that long, and to be up here, are you a little odd by it all? Oh, yes, definitely. I, uh, I'm probably the, the most surprised person of all, you know. Uh, I had no idea at this time last year that, you know, I'd be playing in the major leagues, uh, after I signed uh, to go to college, you know, I just de decided that, uh, you know, I, I take baseball as it, as it came, you know, real slow and easy, and it would take me four or five years after I, maybe if I got the chance, you know, it would take four or five years in the minor leagues before I got here, but uh, it only took one, and I'm really just overjoyed. Ozzy, you look at uh, your quick rise into the major leagues, and certainly I, we talked to Roger Craig Friday, and uh, we asked him about you. Did he know that you were going to be the shortstop this spring? And he says yes. Yeah. Well, you know, I went into spring training as a non-roster player, and uh, I just told myself I had to go out and work hard, you know, and do the things that, that I do well, and uh, everything worked out. 
Roger, you talk about things you do well, and I guess the, the one thing that they talk about is your quick release, uh, getting rid of the baseball. Is, is it something that you were taught, or is it something that you just picked up by, by a lot of work? Well, I do a lot of work uh, myself. I wasn't blessed with a, with a real strong arm, you know, so therefore I had to come up with something that would, uh, that would better my game and, uh, you know, uh, that, that, that pleases the, the fans, too, you know. So uh, I, my game is a game of quickness. And you talk about quickness in baseball, and uh, you look at people with good speed, but yet they do not have that quickness. And people, I guess, say, well, what, what in the world are you talking about? But it's true. I remember a guy like Dick Grote, who was not a, a tremendous runner, but he had the quickness.